<laughs> I feel like, yeah, so I mean, let's just get into it. I mean, I watched the film this morning and I feel like I still have to process it. It was great, just beginning uh, with, uh, with the director, um, uh, S. Craig Zahler, fantastic film. I Thank feel you. like in your films, you show moments that you normally wouldn't see in a genre movie, let's say. I mean, mm -hmm. It's, it's fantastic. I mean, you really do go for it. Yeah, and, and, and that's, thank you. And uh, I mean, this is one of the reasons that I, um, I'm only going to be in situations where I have final cut because that stuff would be cut with concerns that you're losing the audience. And to me, all those extra details, I mean, I always in my favorite scenes of this movie uh, from the moment we shot it is a scene of this guy eating a sandwich. And, and that was a small thing in the script that he elaborated on and brought in the salt and you're experiencing that and you're living that in a different way and you're smelling that sandwich in a different way than if it were cut uh, in a conventional manner. So I'm trying to make these experiences that you sit in and if you're just giving someone the highlight and all the plot points uh, and all the action beats, then it's like every other movie. But how many other movies are you going to watch a guy eat a sandwich for this long? I don't know. That's true. I also find <laughs> that there's something about food that brings people together. And I don't know, if that was the first scene, how did you connect? Was that a good chance to connect with Mel Gibson? I know you know him, but like, you know, yeah. just as far as your character. Well, just say. fun playing. It, it, you know, it was fun when we had the opportunity in these scenes to play because Craig has such great ideas for stuff and fun. And Mel, we, we, we were all kind of laughing. and. Everyone was kind of coming up with ideas and contributing what to do. I think there were some Buster Keaton references yep. on that day. So, yeah, it was fun. You know, it's uh, it's 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 fun when you have the the, the time to explore and, and do those things. Um, and to Craig's point, he's right. Most movies is just they kind of get the exhibition out of the way and get and drive to the, the the turn versus kind of sit with the characters and get to experience them. Yeah. Well, just speaking of your characters, I mean, how would you sort of describe him? Because he is different from the previous one that you worked on in your previous film. Uh, for all in Selbach 99, right? Yeah, definitely a very different character. I, I really like this character. Um, I think he's, you know, um, has a vulnerability and a uh, consciousness to him, and it's tragic, uh, ultimately. Um, he doesn't go with his gut instinct, if you will, and kind of, for a friend, kind of gets dragged into stuff all to his own, own doing, but it's a high price to pay for, <laughs> for helping a friend with a, with a part-time job. <laughs> yes, it is, it's big time. And that's kind of what I wanted to ask because I feel like this film also deals with a lot of expectations. Like these men, it feels like they really feel a weight on their shoulders that comes from real life. Like, you know, I have to be able to provide for my family. I have to be able to provide for my future family in the case of your character. Is that kind of a key theme to the movie? Uh, I mean, it's, it's a theme for them. I mean, a, a key theme to the movie kind of overall is just what financial constraints drive people to do. But uh, just for me as a writer and when I'm coming up with character stuff, they all need to be motivated in their actions. And particularly yeah. if you're getting someone like Ridgman who's embittered but uh, on the side of the law and Anthony who's not gone there before, they need real reasons to do something that they've never done before, that they, that they you know, and so there's the incidents that make their lives worse at the beginning of the piece uh, at a point when things need to get better. So it's, it's really just coming from the, the perspective of there need to be, uh, you know, motivations for all the characters and all the things that they're doing. And in this, in this case, uh, Tori Kittle's character, uh, Henry Jaws, and both of the police officers, uh, it's, it's financial constraints in a future that looks a little darker than it is now. And I think also an added bonus for the character that uh, you play, Vince, is that fact that he kind of doesn't really want to do it fully, and he's kind of, you know, conflicted. So that's kind of something that he has too. I mean, does he, does he really, he, I don't know if he really wants to do it. He's troubled, right? He is. I, I think, you know, there's definitely the motivation in the scene with the buying of the ring and, and realizing, you know, he's planned for the ring. But I think there's, you know, definitely ideas and goals for a life to provide. Um, and the real, realization that that's probably not going to happen. Yeah. And then I think there's the justification of feeling a little bit, you know, betrayed by the system you're working in and not be given a fair shake or holding the bag and the money. And, you know, maybe you're on the wrong side of this exchange that's going on. So I think there's something that's in very deep in human nature, right? Power corrupts and very deep in these sort of situations that Zoller taps into where it's nuanced. And I think this character serves on some level if, if they were one character, he's representing the consciousness, right? Of, we're not stopping to register that these lives are, you know, being taken. And, and of course, then Mel would be the practical side, which is, well, at this point, 
getting emotional is only going to make things worse. And at this point, we're all we are all that that yeah. they ha that everyone has. So. Um, yeah, I think that's always fun to play, you know, it's, and surprising. That's the one thing I'll say with, with, with Zoller, when I first read Brawl, and you come to find out that the character's uh, wife is, is having an affair, mm. and that leads to a closer relationship, yeah. it's felt truthful, right? That's surprising. It's not what you would expect, what they would teach you in a film writing class, but it actually made me root for them more because there was forgiveness for mistakes. Yeah. And I think the same thing is said here. Um, there's some things that happen that surprise you, but in a way, it, it, it hits you even harder because it is probably more, more how things play out. Right. I mean, it's that kind of ambiguity. I don't know. I mean, good or bad, does it even exist? You know, I right. feel like that's true with the characters. Yeah, right? that, that, and, and, that, and that's probably true with almost everything I've written. Okay. Like, it's, it, it's subjective. And if you understand where someone's coming from, is someone going to do a certain amount of bad things to get what he wants for some uh, better, uh, you know, uh, higher, you know, higher cause or to you know, to help out his family, and then how many of those wrong things can you do before you're a bad dude, but is it all coming from a good place? So, I mean, that, that sort of moral gray zone is certainly where I like to write. Absolutely. Man, I, I wish I had more time to chat with you, but unfortunately You're tremendous. Be Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. Really is there thanks. a third movie in the making? I don't know. <laughs> yes, there is. Is there? Okay, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thank you.